Welcome back to Talk the Walk with me, Sarah Wong. I'm what now with Anthony Lau, co-chairman of the CPA Australia's Taxation Committee. Thank you very much, Anthony, for your time. Welcome to Talk the Walk. Hi, Sarah. It's my pleasure to be here. Now, you heard my interview with Jensen, who's, uh, who's your colleague at CPA Australia. Uh, we talk more about the individual relief. Um, um, that's a part of the budget that Financial Secretary Paul Chen released this year. Now we're going to focus on the big picture. OK, Anthony, Financial Secretary Paul Chen uh, is confident that Hong Kong will soon regain its economic position after the COVID pandemic. Now, with that being no end in sight for now, is Secretary Chen's confidence misplaced? Now, Sarah, I think um, overall speaking, we are very pleased to see that in this year's budget, the Financial Secretary has come up with both short-term measures to fight against the pandemic and also different initiatives to invest in the future for the long-term development of Hong Kong. So after having a deficit last year, the government expects that we will return to the black again with mm. a surplus of 18.9 billion for this financial year, compared to the original forecast of a deficit of more than 100 billion. Okay. Now, the difference is primarily due to an unexpected increase in land-related and profits tax revenue. So if you look at Hong Kong, it is a fairly a unique city as a small open economy. Hong Kong is highly affected by the economic conditions and macro policy changes of major countries, like interest rate hike, international right. trade and logistics, all will have an impact on Hong Kong's economy. And this will all have a direct impact on our revenue sources, like profits tax. Now, if we look ahead with the, uh, with the implementation of counter psychical measures on a massive scale to stabilize the economy, with an estimated expenditure of 170 billion, we expect that in next year we will have a deficit of 56 billion. That is approximately 2% of GDP, of our GDP. But remember, our fiscal reserves are estimated to be about you know, 940 billion. So that is around 16 months of government expenditure. So our Hong Kong public finance is still very healthy. Now, you talk about the discrepancy between the forecast, the estimate, and the, uh, and the official numbers that came out this year. Um, it was expected that Hong Kong's fiscal health will remain in the black, like you said, um, compared with a previous forecast of $101.6 billion deficit. That's due to high revenue from stamp duty and land sales, just to recap. Now, I wonder what does the discrepancy mean, you know? Is it good news or bad news for Hong Kong's economy? And is it mainly because of the unpredictability of the COVID pandemic or there's some underlying weakness or defects in, the, in modeling Hong Kong's economic growth in essence? No, I, I think um, the, the discrepancy is mainly coming from a number of factors, okay? Uh, as I said before, Hong Kong is a small open economy and, and also because of the pandemic situation in Hong Kong and because of our narrow tax base, you know, our revenue sources are very concentrated, mainly from profits tax, salaries tax, stamp duties and land premium. And that depends very much on the economic situation in Hong Kong. If you look at last year, in the last second half of last year, because of the e-consumption voucher and, and because the COVID was under control, we, we, we did see, you know, a, a boom or a recovery in the retail as well as the, um, uh, the food and beverage industry sectors. So all these have contributed to the increase in revenue collected by the government. What would you propose the government to do to broaden that tax base? Hong Kong's tax system has remained largely unchanged for almost five decades. I mean, the last comprehensive tax review was conducted back in 1976. And, and obviously, Hong Kong faces a range of long-term economic and social challenges, like aging population, housing, talent shortage, you know, um, you know, so on and so forth. Now, so to maintain 
the international, our international competitiveness in an ever-changing global tax environment. CPA Australia recommend a comprehensive review of the current tax system by focusing on the three Cs, clarity, certainty, and consistency. With COVID cases rapidly surging, surging in Hong Kong, it might not be a right time to make you know, drastic changes in the very short term. But then if we step back and give it another thought, that is probably never a good time to introduce any new type of tax. Because when we are in a when we are in recession, all right, we, we will need to use counter cyclical measures to provide support to the struggling economy. In good time, when we are you know, when we have a significant sur fiscal surplus, then people will say, or oh, you need to give back more sweetness to the general public. So what we are saying now is that the government should embark on a study for a comprehensive tax review because it may take years you know, to consult with different stakeholders, professionals and business community before we can complete this review. But we think it is important for us to start considering this review and to develop a long-term plan to address our deep-rooted structural issues in Hong Kong, like, as I said before, aging population and narrow tax base. Now, you mentioned that Hong Kong is an open economy, and we know that you know, interest rates movement in the United States and in other European countries will affect Hong Kong as well. And we see that uh, the effect already sinking in recently. But we also see that there's special attention being given to making capital markets deeper in Hong Kong and also fostering closer ties with the rest of China and the Greater Bay Area in the budget. Now, uh, I wonder, will further integration with mainland's capital and credit market, for example, benefit Hong Kong as an international financial hub, given that sometimes the mainland policies are not in, totally in step with the larger global capitalist system? Yeah, I, I think now, uh, if we talk about financial services, I mean, there has been one, all, has, this, this, um, financial services has been one of Hong Kong's pillar industries. You know, for for long, long, long. Okay. Right. And and if we see, if if you look at, you know, what the government has done um, previously in the recent years, you know, there are very there are many, many different initiatives. For example, the launch of the uh, cost boundary wealth management connect in the Greater Bay Area, the the southbound, you know, the southbound bond connect, you know, and it was also mentioned, you know, during the budget that the government is preparing to allow stocks trade via the South Bank Stock Connect to be denominated in renminbi. So all this will further develop our capital and bond markets, okay? And, and also the government um, and also announced in the budget to provide tax concession for family offices. So we believe that with the new tax concession, that will further enhance Hong Kong's attractiveness as a hub for family offices and create more business opportunities for the financial services sector and our professional services. Now, when we look at, when you ask, you know, China's policy uh, in, some, in, uh, in some cases do not really align with the policy of other major cities. Uh, I do agree with that. But I think each country is, is quite unique. Now, Hong Kong is, is in a very unique place in a way that we are the gateway between China and the rest of the countries, right? So with all these initiatives and policy, we are still very confident that Hong Kong will remain as a super connector between, Hong Kong, uh, between China and the rest of the world. You mentioned Hong Kong's <clears throat> attractiveness to uh, maybe mainland enterprises and family office from the Greater Bay Area. Well, know that what about you know, Hong Kong's attractiveness to international, multinational uh, corporations. And we know that another major income source for the government will come from multinational corporations based in Hong Kong. And with, there's plans to introduce a domestic minimum top-up tax of 15% on these firms from 2024 to 25. Now, what does that mean for Hong Kong, which has long been you know, um, an attractive destination for regional headquarters of international businesses because of its low tax rate. Yeah, uh, again, this is my favorite topic here, but you know, uh, this is a somewhat complicated topic, so let me 
try to be very simple here. Now, with the uh, introduction of this global minimum tax of 15%, well, that will mean that for big multinational corporations, they will need to pay at least 15% tax on a country by country basis. So what does that mean to Hong Kong? Why will that affect Hong Kong? People have been saying that Hong Kong's tax rate is 16.5%, so it's higher than the 15% minimum tax. Now, but remember, Hong Kong does not impose tax on offshore profits. Hong Kong also has various preferential tax regime that provides a preferential tax rate of 8.25%. So many companies in Hong Kong are actually paying tax at, say, 5%, 8%, or even 0%. So with the introduction of the global minimum tax, that will mean that these Hong Kong companies may need to pay a top-up tax of 15 or 15% 15 in Hong Kong or elsewhere. So would that mean that there will be a wholesale change of our Hong Kong tax system? Now, remember, as I said before, this global minimum tax only targets those big, gigantic corporations with global turnover of at least 680 million. So that will not affect, affect most companies in Hong Kong. In fact, Financial Secretary Paul Chen reaffirmed during his budget speech that Hong Kong will continue to maintain our simple and low-tax system. In short, global minimum, minimum tax will have no impact on SMEs. But what about multinational corporations, right? But uh, let me assure you that when there is threat, there is opportunity. Okay. Now, there is no doubt tax will become a less important factor for MNC groups in the context of business and investment planning. But, you know, remember, Hong Kong's competitiveness does not really tie solely to our low-tax policy. You know, we are an international financial center, close proximity to China, robust regulatory environment, and English-speaking local workforce also contribute to the success of Hong Kong. So imagine if you need to pay at least 15% tax, no matter where you operate, Naturally, you would prefer to operate in a country where there are more business opportunities. So Hong Kong should make use of all these good macro factors to attract MNCs coming to Hong Kong. All right. Wow. Anthony Lau, co-chairman of CPA Australia's Taxation Committee on Financial Secretary Paul Chan's budget. Thank you very much today for your time. Thank you very much. And talk to what will return next Saturday on HKIBC. I'm Sarah Wong. See you then and good night.